My Wrangler jeans from Walmart are legit my favorite go-to pants. They got that slim cut that's always fresh for going out. Hey, what's up? They're durable enough, even for my shift. Water wrap. And stretchy enough for when I want to kick back and chill with a movie. So basically, they can do it all, and on my budget. I mean, come on. You really can't beat all that. Shop your Wrangler pants at Walmart. Hi, I'm Brandon. and I love... Oh, um, what's the company? Ar- Ardman. Ardman. Ardman Christmas Movies. I'm Dan, and I despise Ardman Christmas Movies. I'm Alonzo, and if you thought Dan was a monster before, just wait. And this <laughs> is, is the Deck the Hallmark Podcast. Podcast. Deck the Hallmark, it's his podcast. Big Dan and friends host his podcast. We hope you like this jolly podcast. Well, well, well. Oh, boy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of... Deck the Hallmark. It's another week another as well. Week. Final week of August is Can you believe here. it? Flew I can't, by. I can't. This year has flown by. Yeah. We're under four months to Christmas now. We've already had the August Christmas party episode of Christmas, of morning. Christmas morning. That's right. Yesterday. That's how I mark it. I know. <laughs> and, and we're just flying by here. Doing a Christmas movie here on a Monday. <sighs> One of my all-time faves. If you listen to the disc list, if you listen to the disc list, you'll know that Alonzo put this on his top 10 Christmas movies since the 90s, and I was embarrassed for him. And, and, I, and so it's, I, I, but I will say this, Alonzo, I, I was more than happy to go in with fresh eyes and give it a fresh take and try my best here. I was more than happy to do that. Brand I'm watched good. it with me. He can attest. <laughs> I can. I can attest. Yes. I can indeed attest. <laughs> Great. Uh, I'm excited to dive into it. I'm also excited to be heading into, as Alonzo often says, the Burr months. Uh, it's when things begin to really get real. Yes. I can't wait. It's I mean, the, the months m- where we don't talk about Bill Burr. I know. We, don't, we talk about him, the, we talk about him all year, except and for... And after that, we shut it down. Our hands are tied. It's, it's like the months where you don't eat oysters. You know? He yeah. complains about it, but... What doesn't what he complain gonna, that's about? That's right. You know, it's just one more thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm getting very excited though about uh, the the marathon. We've uh, announced it on the social medias. Obviously, this holiday season heading into season seven, <sighs> Dano, Isn't which that crazy? is crazy, uh, crazy wow. to think about. Uh, and we're going to be uh, live streaming, of course, to kick off the holiday season for 24 plus straight hours. Uh, we're all going to be in a house together, which is going to be a lot of fun. Um, what are you most excited about? What are you What are you most excited about, Alonzo? What are you most scared about? Um, the whole real world thing. Is, is, it the, is it the cameras in the bathroom, or what is it Alonzo, a, that you're most we're, concerned? We're just, just go ahead and clear this up. There are no cameras in the bathroom. Uh, Thank you. But Thank also, you. all right, fine. I'll this return is them. your fourth marathon, Alonzo. Yes, your yes, fourth it is. one. We did yes. eighteen nine, or we did nineteen twenty twenty one, and then Alonzo started coming in twenty two. No, no, no. 21. 21. Oh, 21, 22, 23, 20, 24. Yeah, 24, yeah. So this yeah. is your fourth. That's right. 20. Wow. Yeah. What yeah. a time. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, making I, I'm making cookies. You know, yeah. like I, what, yeah. what could be more Hallmark Christmas than that? Uh, in fact, like I, I've already got, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I asked the general to start sort of an online spreadsheet where because I need some intel about what's in this kitchen, how many cookie sheets, what size, are there measuring cups, you know, all this that This is sort called of stuff. being prepared right here. Yeah. Is what yeah. this is. I would have not it, thought of any of this stuff. It's called show prep. I don't show know if you've prep. heard of it. Oh, listen, it's really listen. Exciting. Nobody He's heard of show prep like I have. That's true. Big deal around here. You know, so I'm sure Brian and I will be like taking turns and get, getting into that oven. And, you know, I'm digging up as many good like cookie recipes that do not involve nuts. Yeah, of course. Or for Mr. Special. And, That's right, and, Mr. Uh, Special. You know, at the, but it's Could we, great, but. dare we try to make the Save the Town brownies from the book? Dare we Ooh. try it? I was Save thinking maybe we, maybe we make the uh, eggnog from the book. Wow. We can, Dare we, can, we try it? That we I do it say is great. You, every year at your I Christmas make party. It and it's a hit at the parties <laughs> that I throw. If you know two things about me, it is maker of things in the home and party thrower. Those two things are my jam. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Look, I had to write fan fiction for that cooking category. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. That no, whole chapter is you know, no, a premise, basically. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, very excited about it. I, I think about it often, and it just kind of makes me smile just thinking about it. I, I, I know it's not a surprise to anybody, but... It's, I'm pretty unbearable uh, leading up to <laughs> mid-October, starting right about, right about now. Yeah. Uh, I'm very giddy. It, like, and there's you know more and more infos coming out about the Christmas stuff. That's coming. It's just uh, every day is a new adventure. Uh, and you all have to juggle like Paramount Plus now? I mean, mm. I mean Hallmark, Hallmark Plus, Plus. Us, on top of the... Don't tell the, me Paramount the, Plus is getting in the game. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't. they probably will. But uh, yeah. Yeah, you, got, you got Hallmark Plus on top of, you know, your 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 standard Hallmark and mystery. And so, yeah, it's, it's going to be... It's all a day's work around here at a, the Bramble Jam a, Podcast a, Studios. A, a full plate for you kids. Listen, yeah. I, not all heroes wear capes, and <laughs> uh, I understand it. You know, sometimes we got to... Sometimes you have to cover the Chicken Sisters, and... <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. Yeah. Right? They can't, you can't, you can't go uncovered. And we ain't chicken. Nope. No, we're not chicken. We, I mean, nope. like, we've been saying for years, when are they going to just, when is Hallmark finally going to get their crap together and release three Jane mysteries in a month? When are they going to do it? Yeah. Thank God for Hallmark Plus. <laughs> what about the yeah. Dune Bay? <laughs> Danube. Danube. <laughs> well, nah. we've been saying Danube. Is it Danube? Oh, it can be Danube, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. It can be one of those two. It can't be Dan D- Babe or whatever D- I Doom said. Bay. Yeah. <laughs> Doom Bay, no. Yeah. It that can't be. be. It's that's 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 too far. Yeah. That's out of the question. Yeah, Doom Bay. Uh let's talk Arthur Christmas. Let's um originally came out in the United Kingdom, the UK, as uh, they call it, uh November eleventh. <laughs> What did you just say? I just said, as they call it, as and they call it. it made me laugh. <laughs> I made myself laugh. Uh, November 11th, 2011, and then uh, a couple weeks later in the United States, November 23rd, uh, 2011. I don't have the theaters that it was premiered in, and I apologize. To oh, no. Out there. Um, and I want a little something like this. What if I told you that the job of Santa isn't just a jolly old man in a sleigh, but it is a prestigious family business that's been handed down Generation to generation. That's exactly what Arthur Christmas is going to tell us about. The current Santa, Malcolm Claus, as he is named, is the uh, on his 70th Christmas Eve mission. But at this point, it's a bit more ceremonial than it is anything else. He's got a high-tech sleigh, the S1, a squad of high-tech elves, that basically have taken over all the heavy lifting, lifting, and he just kind of has to, you heavy know. listing would work, too. That's true. <laughs> Try to check that list twice, in fact. Uh, Malcolm's oldest son, Steve, is practically running the North Pole like a drill sergeant and runs it all and tells everybody what to do and all that good stuff, while his youngest, Arthur, from Arthur's Christmas, uh, is stuck answering Santa's Mail, but you might think that's a bad thing. It's not. Arthur loves the mail room. Uh, this year, despite um, some elves accidentally uh, dropping, I'm sorry, disaster strikes when an elf accidentally drops a present from the high tech S1 during a delivery, and that is a bike. It's for a girl named Gwen, and no one notices it. And everybody thinks that the job has been done. We did it. Congratulations. Another Christmas in the books. But Arthur, who personally replied to Gwen's letter, uh, uh, assuring her that Santa is indeed real, is devastated that she is not going to get her gift. So he pleads, Malcolm, Dad, Steve, can we please go to the S1 and make this right? Steve says, no big deal. This is whatever. It's one kid out of billions the fact that we didn't miss more is really a miracle yeah so what's the big deal and steve's just annoyed um that his dad despite thinking that he was going to retire is not going to retire so he definitely does not want to do this emergency delivery and dad's old dad just wants to go and uh take a load off so enter grand santa malcolm's father used to be santa as well and uh, he's definitely interested in going on this trip, if for no other reason than to pr- prove that the old way of doing things is just as good, if not better, than all this high-tech gear. I didn't need it then. I don't need it now. We can deliver this ga- uh, this gift. Uh, Arthur is pumped that he is going to be able to go and deliver this gift. They dust off the old Eve wooden sleigh. Yeah, reindeer yep. l- l- led by reindeer with magic. Make Santa uh, great again. That's exactly right. 
Um, and they head off with uh, with Arthur, Grand Santa, and a stowaway elf uh, who really loves gift wrapping, uh, a lot of gift wrapping. And uh, it doesn't go great at all, really. They encounter some lions. They're mistaken for aliens. There's a hole now. Everybody is looking for uh, potential alien encounters across uh, the world, and there's a lot of uh, international uh, frenzy going on. While all this is happening, Steve is busy trying to prove that he's the right uh, choice for Santa, and uh, he says, you know what? I can do this. They're not going to do it. So he decides we got to get a, a replacement gift out there. Um, and his dad is like, I'm going along with you. So there's a bit of a battle there between father and son, and uh He's basically saying, I can still do this job. I'm not too old for the job. Um, I'm as good as I once was. That's exactly but right. I'm as good as exactly right. I ever was. Uh, unfortunately, though, wrong address. He ain't. Yes. Wrong address. Yeah. Dad doesn't quite know how to actually work um, the S1 and puts in the wrong address. What can he do? Eventually, though, Arthur and the crew, they end up stranded on a beach, and Arthur is just sad. He's losing his Christmas spirit. Some might say... It was my story once, but not anymore. Yeah, it is. Not anymore. Just to try your best, buddy. Uh, You'll get there. Well, whatever. One step at a time. Um, at least you're admitting you have a problem now. No, I'm saying some. You said it once, some, once was your story. That's I a said good, that's some a good might first step. say. It's a first step. You've been going to the meetings? You've been going to the meetings. <laughs> Santa's not, uh, You've been going it. to the meetings at the nativity? You've been yeah. going? <laughs> going to the meetings at the nativity. That's right. <laughs> yes. Good. Um, so Arthur, though sad, decides, gotta, gotta give this one last go. I'm gonna push aside all of my, uh, phobias and fear, and I'm gonna make sure that this happens. As dawn is quickly approaching, Arthur manages to, um, recover the, the sleigh, um, and get to where he needs to go with the bike. But, who also is there is Steve and Malcolm, and they are all going at the same time, trying to outdo one another, you know, Santa stuff, to make sure that this child gets the gift, but really to make sure that they, uh, that they are uh, the heroes of this story. They all deliver the gift, and they take a moment, and they actually watch the child get the gift and open it. And as it, at this point, Steve looks over at his brother and realizes the joy of delivering presents uh, means so much more to him than it does to himself. And so maybe it is, maybe it's Arthur who should be Santa next because I can crush the tech stuff and the, I'm really good at what I do. Maybe I should keep doing that. And uh, Malcolm sees this as well. And so uh, Steve steps aside and Malcolm is going to retire and uh, Arthur is going to be the next Santa the S1 is renamed the EV in honor of the old sleigh, pulled by 5,000 reindeer. And uh, Steve is now uh, running the show back up at the North Pole. And Santa Malcolm has retired. And everyone is happy. And that, my friends, was Arthur, Arthur Christmas. Christmas. We did it. Let's take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll break this movie down here on Deck, Deck the, the Hallmark. Hallmark. My Keurig Brewer from Walmart always comes in super clutch. I got it so I can keep grinding on my paper. You know I'm hitting that deadline. I also got it so I can stay up late to do some exam cramming. And of course, you know I'll be ready to stroll into my morning class, sipping in style. <sighs> I guess you could say it's a literal lifesaver. Cheers to that. Shop your coffee fuel needs at Walmart. Hey parents, Greenlight is here to take one big thing off your to-do list, teaching your kids about money. With a Greenlight debit card and money app of their own, kids and teens learn to earn, save, and invest. You can send money instantly, set flexible controls, and get real-time notifications of your kids' money activity. Set up chores and put allowance on autopilot to reward them for their hard work. Then, learn about the world of money together. Get one month free when you sign up at greenlight.com slash podcast.
Hello, everybody. Welcome back. We're talking Arthur Christmas here on a Monday. Uh, very excited. We are taking a journey back to some movies uh, that maybe we you know came up before we even started doing the show. That's right. We haven't had the opportunity to review, such as Arthur Christmas. And uh, we're going to start with a hot take. We're going to share exactly how we felt about this movie. Uh, people that listen to the show, obviously, as as Dan mentioned, know Alonzo's love of this movie as it, and ended up in his top ten. Uh, post nineties Christmas, Christmas Not post nineties. Okay, post eighties. Post eighties. Yes, sure. that's one uh, way Christmas to say movies. That. Um, but what are your thoughts now that you've rewatched it here in twenty twenty four? Yeah, for years now, when people have asked me, like, oh, what's you know, what are some great Christmas movies that have come out since your book was published? Have yourself a movie, Little Christmas in twenty ten. <laughs> Uh, one of the first things that generally comes to mind is Arthur Christmas. This came out the the next year in 2011, and I think it's great. And and, and I I think it holds up. Like the, I watched it again for this, and it's probably like the sixth or seventh time I've seen it. Always makes me a little misty eyed. I always think it's funny. Um, it it I, I love the kind of British humor of it. I love the. I think that every generation sort of shapes. Santa in their own image in terms of technology and culture and history and whatnot. I love the way that this movie kind of tackles the Santa lineage and talks about, you know, uh, just the, the specifics of, of how the toys get delivered and, and, and all of that kind of thing. And I just, I just think it's really charming. Like if it's a movie I would show to kids, it's a movie I would show to adults. Um, it's in the rotation for me every year or two, I go back and watch it again. So yeah, big, big fan, still a big fan. Big fan, Brian. How about you? Uh, you and me both, Alonzo. I love this movie. I watch this movie every year. I didn't watch it in 2011. I found it uh, I, I, probably a handful of years later, 2015, mm. 2016, somewhere around then. I watched it for the first time, and I was like, this movie is awesome. I think it looks awesome. As you said, it is funny. There's lots of chuckles to be had, and it is quite heartwarming at the end of it. And I, I agree. There's um, something about the beginning of this movie that is just really fun to think about. You know, we, we often talk about how uh, our Santa Claus is Tim Allen, and yes. that is yeah. how it. That's the North Pole. Duh. That's how the, the that, how it all would work. And uh, this movie, I think, uh, has a similar thing. Like you see it, and you're like, oh, that you know what? Their technology has evolved since Tim Allen's days. How would technology um, influence and be integrated into the uh, story of Santa and his? Christmas Eve mission and so I thought that this was a really clever and interesting way to tackle that and ultimately at the end kind of combining the two um, ways of, of, of thinking there the big ship it's fast but also the reindeer we what about the reindeer so something a combination uh, of those two things was really cool at the end of this movie and it made uh, made me as they say at the end of this movie quite happy as well uh, Dano as they say they all say quite happy as well that's what they say um, everyone I, says that they were, was, ha- they were happy Happy. Here's what I'll say it. about Arthur Christmas. I wish I had seen it in the movie theater. I was doing some research on the film, and this film was designed and made for a 3D viewing experience. Now, I love a well done 3D movie. I love it. And watching it That's this three time, dimensions, by the way, yeah, everybody. Watching it this time, it was evident that there was a lot of moments, a, a ton of moments in this movie that could have really popped on 3D. And I did some research on the reviews of this movie in 3D and they are raves that they are like, this is a great 3D experience. And I think that would have added something, a dimension, if you will, okay. uh, oh. for, me, for me personally. As it stands, this movie doesn't really work for me. I love Bill Nye. I love James McAvoy, J- James Broadbent, the whole cast, wonderful. Um I, the best read of this movie is is that Arthur heals the generational trauma of Santa by reminding them that they all need each other and need parts of what made them good to continue the legacy forward. I, I, I don't think that they stick that landing, though. I, I The two words that immediately come to mind is after a really quality opening where you have this hall of all these pictures of Santa and this really sweet letter that's written and Arthur responding, 
I, the, the, the word that comes to mind is manic. Like I, I told Bran watching the next scene, like I don't know if it's because I love Ardman animation and, and I love what they normally do in their animation that this is bothersome to me, but it just feels like it's it doesn't trust itself. It doesn't feel like a heist to me. It just feels like my eyes are hurting. It, it is it is manic and it is very restless energy. Like I, I don't feel like we ever settle into anything. We're just kind of go, 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 go. Look at all these things flying at the screen. Whereas in a 3D movie, that's wonderful. And watching this movie even now, like Bill Nye's Santa, well, I remember his name. Grand Santa. Grand Santa. He's terrible. He's a pretty terrible human being who, who, who isn't great uh, and just has decided he always wants to do it his way. Um, the Santa that's still in charge, Maxwell, or is that his name? Maxwell, correct? What is Malcolm. Malcolm. Malcolm, that's it. Malcolm, also terrible, aloof isn't doing his job, doesn't know what's going on, refuses to, to, to pass it along. Steve has no heart about him, even though he's very, very efficient. Like, the, the read that I always have of this movie is, is Arthur is trying to restore a magic that was never really there to begin with. And I think diving more into that is a better movie. Is it a kid's movie? I don't think so. But as it stands... <laughs> There are a few funny moments. There's some good voice work. The end is, I did like the ending more this time than I, I remembered liking it, but it's just not for me. And I also don't like the animation of the movie. I, I don't know why. Like, this is my least favorite Ardman animation theatrical release, save for maybe Flushed Away. That I looked it up and I was like, oh, that one wasn't very good. Save oh, you, for didn't see the, you didn't see the soccer one. That was. The I worst. didn't see the soccer <laughs> one, but I like the Pirates more than this. I think that movie is real funny. Pirates is great. I even kind of like Flushed away i will say this about the older santas i don't think that they've always been terrible i think that grand santa has become bitter because he's been shoved aside yeah and i think that malcolm is just kind of like older and tired and doddering but also stubborn uh but i don't think that they've i don't think they were that they were like never into it steve yes is coldly efficient um and i think that needs arthur to balance him out but i don't know that the movie is trying to say yes the santas have always been self no, i don't it takes arthur to fix them <laughs> yeah i think that was the i think they're not saying that but i think it comes across anyway that's my problem mm. is is i think the best part of this is is they kind of use a little bit of every santa to make it work at the end that's the best right. part of this but i just don't think that part is strong enough i just feel like it's really like an eminem music video like it's very just like we're more worried about the kids whereas most of artman's stuff is very slow moving and deliberate and i think i think that might have betrayed i'd be willing to admit my expectations probably betrayed me on this some because i i i kind of know what i'm in for with an Ardman film, and this is, in my opinion, just not not it. So there's that. All right, uh, it's time for all the feels. Where we talk about what in this movie gave us those feels, Alonzo. You know, I I love the characters who really love what they do. So like Arthur, I, I, I just respond to his, not just like the way that he writes these letters back to the kids, but like his, the, 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 he, the way that he's brimming with enthusiasm just to see his own father return from the trip. Like how excited, like, you know, dad, dad, and we're like, it, it's like buddy, the elf in a way, just like that notion of like Santa, even though he's, you know, it, it, part of the family, it's still exciting right. to him. Uh, I love Bryony's, you know, very efficient, um, you know, she is a person who is good at her job, you know, because yeah. I'm a terrible gift wrapper and like same three, three pieces of tape. That's really impressive, um, you know, on a moving bicycle. Uh, so, yeah, I like they give me a lot of feels. And I, I, the ending, it just always kills me. Like when they're all standing in that yeah. closet watching the girl open her present yeah. and Santa realizes, he says, like, Steve, you deserve this job. But really, it should be Arthur. And then when when Steve gives him the the playing piece and says like I'll be the candle because early in the film when they're playing the board game Santa says well Steve you should be the candle you have such great ideas and Steve is kind of in that moment acknowledging I am the idea guy that is my lane that's what I should be doing you are the heart I am the head together we can make you know we can we can really be a great Santa team right right I um I love 
the beginning of this movie, as I mentioned, I just think that it's it's awesome and it looks cool and all the stuff and it and it's funny. Santa just kind of like the idea of having him having to be shown where to put put yeah. the present uh, is really funny. It's a very like British World War Two veteran Santa, you know, but <laughs> yeah. who's like getting on in years. Yeah, um, and then as you mentioned, uh, Alonso, the ending when they're watching is just that's perfect. It's a perfect moment, perfect scene. Perfect movie? I don't know, but uh, but boy, is it good. Is it good. Uh, Dan, any feels for you? If you listened to the Force Friday episode sure. last Friday, uh, where Ryan and Brandon gushed about Phantom Menace Thank you. At being better than A New Hope, sure. in, case Alonzo, <laughs> in case Alonzo hasn't listened yet. I uh, missed just to, that one. Wow. Yeah, I'm okay. so thrilled to get that reaction live. That was w- worth it. And the reason that they both... He's laughing because he agrees. Yeah, and he, he, he didn't know yeah, anybody yeah, else was with him. Uh, he, uh, uh, those two guys, the reason that they say that Phantom Menace is better than New Hope is because they point to two big set pieces in Phantom Menace and they go, hey, all I remember is I was this year's old and these two set pieces slap. That means it's more entertaining than New Hope. If you were to just watch the first five minutes of this movie and the last five minutes of this movie, you would be like, is this the best Christmas animated Christmas movie of all time? Like you would, it, it, the first five minutes before they, before it takes moving the world for Santa to deliver one gift before then. And then after it takes so many different broken down versions of technology to get one gift to the person, uh, even though they've delivered billions of gifts, if you just watch those two things, and I'm not saying that as a slight, the the end of this movie crushes and the beginning of this movie is really, really solid. Like it opens and establishes well and it closes really strongly. And both of those scenes work for me kind of in equal measure. The the For some reason, the slow walk down the hall of all the pictures of Santa is really great. And then the, obviously the end of this movie with all the Santas watching together and realizing that they can be a part uh, of the of the machine moving forward and that, that they matter and that they're important. Like, yeah, yeah, of course. All of that is amazing. So I'm not mad at that. I also really liked Arthur's uh, sweater, and Dan had to remind me that it's a cartoon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't... Uh- uh, my 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 sister in law is a very very talented uh, uh, knitter. Uh, in fact, is like getting a master's degree in. Wow! Uh, in, I didn't in, know that that was a thing you craft. could get. That's awesome. There, there is, and she, you know, like her her, her final project is, is a, a sweater that she created. Like she created the pattern, and everything. It's like really gorgeous. She's super talented, and she's been working on a Christmas sweater for me. And we've been kind of throwing ideas back and forth. And I actually said, I'll tell you, the best Christmas sweater that exists is an Arthur Christmas. That's <laughs> but it's a, cartoon. it's a cartoon, and I don't know that it would work in real life. Yeah. But it looks great uh, yeah. as a cartoon. Uh, let's take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll get to the way, what, and the what, and the hallmark here on Take the Hallmark. My Keurig Brewer from Walmart always comes in super clutch. I got it so I can keep grinding on my paper. You know I'm hitting that deadline. I also got it so I could stay up late to do some exam cramming. And of course, you know I'll be ready to stroll into my morning class, sipping in style. (sighs) I guess you could say it's a literal lifesaver. Cheers to that. Shop your coffee fuel needs at Walmart. Summer is supposed to be an opportunity to slow down. But when you look at your kids, you can't help but notice that your kids are growing up fast. Help them build independence as they grow with Greenlight. Greenlight is a debit card and money app for families where parents can keep an eye on kids' money habits while kids learn how to save, invest, and spend wisely. It's the easy, convenient way to raise financially smart kids. Get your first month free when you sign up at greenlight.com slash podcast. We're back. We're talking Arthur Christmas 2011. It's time for the way what? It is where we talk about what this movie made us go. Wait, what? Alonzo? Yeah, I mean, again, when we're dealing with a movie where like the the the, the about the, mach- the 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 machinery of Santa Claus and his gift distribution system, there's a lot we have to sort of take as read. And I think the movie does a pretty good job of following its own internal logic. And there is a Trelu in Argentina. I looked it up. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
So for me, the one my one question is that, I, this is a wait water. Maybe it's a it's a what the hallmark, but um, uh, how old are Arthur and Steve? It's a great question because we get this sense of like the Santas having their tenure. You know, like the current Santa has been Santa for seventy years. Um, and Grand Santa was Santa before that for however long. But it's like, well, how does aging work for you when you clearly die? Because it's not like there's dozens of other Santas, you know, milling about the place. Like at some point they set you out on the ice flow, I guess. Um, huh. Like, I, you know, I just obviously aging is different. And, and, and this isn't a case of like an immortal Santa. This is a patriarchal lineage Santa. I, I would love some some idea of how long these guys have been around because like there's a line that Grand Santa has about how Steve telling him you can't fly through Saigon it's a war zone it's like okay well then that means you were around for the 60s but this is the 2010s and Arthur is has, still has very kind of a a childlike demeanor and a youthful enthusiasm is like how old is he I, so that, that's that's my question is how how old are these folks in the parameters of how Santa's live and die in age in this universe. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, I love it. I mean, this is his, uh, this is uh, Malcolm's 70th right. Christmas that he's been Santa. So he did it longer did, than did his, did his grand Did his dad retire really early? Yeah, because he says he's only like 130 some years old, yeah. right? Something like that. Yeah, so he must have only done it for 50 years. Man. Great. Listen, when, some, when, do, when do you start, though? Like, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah 18. That's, yeah, that's tough. <laughs> um, so I got a few. One at the beginning, we do have this whole thing. The elves are down and they're given presents and they have all these different uh, technologies to help uh, know what to give the kids and whether or not a kid is naughty or nice. So you kind of hold it up and it scans the kid and it tells yep. you if it's naughty or nice. And one kid is uh, not quite nice enough. And so the elf then turns it onto himself, scans him, and it comes up as 82% nice, which... I feel like is low for an elf. For, for an elf, is very low. Um, <laughs> very like, low. Like, what skeletons does this elf have in his yeah, closet? It's another good one to hallmark. Because uh, <laughs> I, 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 was, I would have assumed, and maybe this is like just expectations, I would have assumed that the elves are as good as it gets, or as nice as it yeah. gets. Yeah. Yeah, and that's just eighty-two percent. That's a almost no. Low you don't think elf. so. You don't I, think I, so. I, I think you're being racist. No, I mean I. I <laughs> I'm kidding. I you're think, being uh, elvist. You're being <laughs> elvist. Exactly. No, I think in this movie though, you see elves being like they're kind of bitchy to Arthur. Sure. Like he gets dismissed a lot. They, they're they're prone to panic apparently. So like I, I think I think we're we're, we're given well rounded elves here. That yes, for the most part, I'm sure they are nice and they they meet the nice meter, but they're not. Perfect little lane. Yeah, I got a good what the homework would be. What's the minimum <laughs> niceness? <laughs> like, do you got to be over 80%? Are there when 70%? You go on are there 70% nice uh, elves out there? I don't know. Yeah. Um, Maybe it's like the tomato meter, like starting at 60 is where you're. You mentioned is. the tomato meter about so, the. So uh, that was one of my way what's. I'll go ahead now. Like, I was getting rotten tomato vibes from this nice naughty meter. And I, <laughs> like, the worst thing, and Alonzo can attest to this, about rotten tomatoes is. That score means virtually nothing. Like a 85% means eight and a half out of 10 critics gave this movie a six of 10 or better. This right. movie could be a six of 10. So a movie could have a 100 on Rotten Tomatoes and every critic in theory could have given it a six of 10. So that doesn't really do much. That's why you have movies that can go in the twenties and thirties and be good. And, and movies that are, you know, can be yeah. in the nineties and be like, yeah, that was fine. Th this is worse though, because basically what you're telling me is there's a hard line. It's like the I 85 corridor for snow here in Greenville. <laughs> Amen. If you're at 50, I think if you're at 50, you get a toy. And if you're at 49, Cole. Cole. <laughs> that is tough, man. That you have put place your entire year in the balance of a single percentile of good or bad. That's brutal, man. Which is obviously why the elves are bending the rules and, you know, yeah. like scanning themselves. Even they even don't. They know even they don't. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. This is, man, this isn't good. What a tough line there. Sheesh. Um, I, how, how worried should we be about 
the camera access that the North Pole seems to have. Oh my gosh, um, this is massive. Because you know, I, I we have at, at you know all he I, sees you when you're. Sleeping. We've all he consented to Santa. Little. We've all consented to That's Santa being able to, say out loud. to see us that when we're sleeping and know when we're awake. This is readily available for everybody. There, it's on. It's on uh, CCTV up in the North Pole. They're just watching these cameras. So and many. It, they have it, every angle of every place that you could possibly need. It is terrifying. Big, big yeah. brothers. They watching. have bathroom, They have bathrooms. They have cameras in the bathroom. They do. It's unlike our thing for the marathon. Well, at, at one and point, again, I just have to see if we can return them. If we can't return the cameras, then we ha- we might as well use them. As at, at one point, I thought that the elf that loves to wrap gifts they're the ones that are getting all the angles on the bike that's what i thought so too but then you see an angle where the the camera is facing the bicycle and the elves hanging on wrapping the back of the bike and you're like oh no they have an angle that is just this bike that's yeah. a problem it's a problem what can you do yeah you know and if you get if you put an elf on the shelf in your house oh, that, man, that's on just, you it's like you're just putting a sewer line directly into your house <laughs> that's why we, we got rid of all computers phones that's right. everything. we don't we do any of that no no. Oh, yeah. no, no no we're analog here we sure are uh <laughs> i know you can, i know no. you can watch us on we Fila. ran a line <laughs> yeah. from our studio to alonzo's apartment that's yeah. how we're doing this and right then it's going, and that's then right. it's going directly to the folks at philo that's but, right yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, That's it, it then. That's it. No, we actually yeah. upload these at a Kinkos. We send yeah. Aaron <laughs> We sent Aaron Shea to a Kinko's. One frame at a time. And it's 24 hours, and that's really good because she's got to be there a long time. It's pretty slow upload speeds there at the Kinkos. But again, sure. it's, yeah. it's, uh, privacy matters. Uh, last but not least, listen, I know. I know she's a gift wrapping elf, and she can do things with three pieces of tape that I couldn't dream of. You, ch- you can't wrap a bike you just can't <laughs> i don't care okay, who you Brian. are okay you can't i and mean i get told the, this a lot but this is a movie yeah, even looking at even <laughs> looking a movie at it with elves and an s1 starship <laughs> Enterprise. everything else is tracking perfectly but then no. you see the bike at the end and you're like this is where this this is a bridge too far <laughs> everyone knows you get one of those big bags you put it in there and you call it a day everyone knows the bike is just what stays beside the tree that's and they true can't see it when they come that's out of the true that's on the seat is. and that's it that's that, it wasn't there a hallmark movie in the last couple of years where there was like a competition of wrapping awkwardly shaped gifts and somebody yes. did have to wrap a bike yeah i think so I yeah. feel like that. I mean, that, that does, does ring a sound, bell. It sounds sounds. Uh, and then there's just, that movie when Amelia Ullerup was uh, wrapping sixty some <laughs> gifts an hour, and I was like, "Are you? <laughs> what? That's crazy." But I bet she wasn't wrapping a, a gift bike. bag, tissue paper. Yeah, <laughs> boom, <laughs> boom. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, bikes are bikes are bag situations or nothing at all, and I think we would mm-hmm. all agree. Uh, Dana, most of the heavy hitters taken here: the naughty or nice system, the camera angles that 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 all doesn't track even for an Ardman Santa movie. But the way that they uh, usher in this plot is. We forgot a gift, and Steve doesn't want to go because he's mad he's not Santa. Santa doesn't want to go because he doesn't really care anymore. That was That's enough. That is enough of a plot for us. But they throw in, they have this massive thing instead of the sleigh called the S1. It has flown 7 million miles, 7 million miles, and Steve says... We can't risk flying it anymore. <laughs> so basically what they're saying is is 7 million miles, no problem. It needs to go 5,500 miles. We can't do it. Can't pull it off, not with this equipment. There's no way we could possibly get the there. The tubes are cooling. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no way we could do it. It's got seven, it's got seven million miles on or not a penny more. There's no, there's no way we can do any more tonight. That's crazy. But is it that he, I mean, is he just saying that because really he, he just feels like there's an acceptable I mean, margin of error? He, there's a brief moment. I think Steve's the most interesting character in this thing because there's a brief moment where he's You like, would be drawn to Steve. There's a brief moment where he's like, in his head, it, at least on screen, it looks like he's like, oh no, we have to deliver this gift. And then he goes through all these things in his head. Um, I think it's like, I don't want to send the ship back out. I don't want to do it. It's one gift, but I'm pretty much perfect. One out of, you know, if I got every gift delivered, but one out of a billion, that's mathematically perfect. So I'm, I'm good to go. Really? He's just a climate activist. Like the, the global warming. Yeah, exactly. it's, listen, you gotta, it's a, it's a it cost analysis and it's not yes. worth the damage. It's going to um, be done. Statistically I, insignificant. I also think that this, 
the the one thing this movie doesn't do that I wanted it to do was show me why the tech isn't great. <laughs> so like I know that we need a personal touch. I know that we need a, a Santa to deliver a gift and the magic of Christmas is watching people open a gift. I know that Steve doesn't have that. But at every turn in this movie, the tech is better than what they're doing. In every like the the old reindeers are bad. The map they use, bad. The Santa's, the, the, the sled, it's all bad. Like, I would have loved to see, do you see what the S1 doesn't have? The fact that this sleigh knows where to go or something, some sort of Christmas magic element to tell me why we need some of the old with some of the new. And this movie doesn't do it. And it's like, basically, Steve was right, but didn't have a soul. And if Steve had a soul, then this movie is just credits. And, and I, I, that bothers me in this movie. Well, I, I look. I think that if the if the the tech were being declared bad, they would ditch it entirely and they'd go back to the old reindeer and sleigh system. I think the fact that they're incorporating it, what the movie is saying is all of these bells and whistles are great, but they only matter if you believe if people that matter. Every, yeah. yeah, if you believe that every single child matters, and if you look at one child not getting a gift as statistically insignificant or within the margin of error or not a big deal compared to the billions of ones you delivered correctly, that's where the problem is it's not the problem the problem isn't with the tech arthur's going to use that tech as santa but he is bringing the reindeer in as a nod to yeah, history it's just and, a, it's you know. just a thank you nod that those yeah. reindeer unnecessary but it's just a like hey we remember you <laughs> <laughs> well but if they weren't doing so they wouldn't need five thousand. they like i think they they uh they went green there they were, they're green they went green they went green <laughs> But you don't know how much methane that those reindeer I was produce. About to say. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Again, I don't I know. know how green we're getting. <laughs> they may have gone brown. <laughs> <laughs> you well, couldn't but, not. <laughs> but they fly. But they fly by. They fly by magic. They fly by. They fly by magic, and that's a yeah. everyone knows. It's the whole ball game. Yeah. That's two Corinthians. That's uh, right. Let's get to <laughs> let's get, let's get to what the hallmark. Uh, that's where we wonder what could have been. Maybe have some clarity in any questions that we still have. Alonzo, are you wondering any questions? I do wonder uh, if, okay, there's a whole segment where they get out of Tanzania by sprinkling magic dust on a couple of poor reindeer that get left behind. And unfortunately, it also gets on the lions and the zebras and the elephants and whatnot. And I'm just <laughs> wondering, like, if did anybody get eaten midair? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, a lot of what, floating lions and tigers and bears on the oh my there. And how did those landings go? You know, I think I think that's a, probably best that we, we, we fly away from that segment never to return. We uh, this is going to sound terrible, but him saying left behind for some reason just unlocked a memory when we would go out to eat we we're all working and we would panda would always need to go to the bathroom before we'd leave and we would sometimes if we decided to leave like acting like we were going to leave somebody we would say you've been kirk cameron's that's what we would say i don't know why <laughs> left and behind then, yeah yeah left behind and what we would do is is he'd go to the bathroom and we would all run to the car <laughs> get in the car and we would drive to somewhere in the parking lot where we could see him but he couldn't see us <laughs> And he would walk out, and he would always look Monsters. around, and we would wait, and then we would text him, Kirk Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think of Panda as the Arthur Christmas yeah. of, of Bramble Jam. Yeah, no. that's, especially since he's lost his Christmas. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, obviously, the North Pole and Santa, as we notice, obviously, early on, this is not... A new thing that's been going on for a long time. A many, many Santas. Um, the North Pole's super British. Very. Uh, yes. <laughs> what did that, is has that evolved at all? Was that you know when what, you would think eventually maybe it would slowly? Did he get all of the elves from Br the UK, or <laughs> did they pick up on on Santa's accent? It's just it is very British. Um, well, and what's up with that? Yes. I think a thing I wanted to point out, which I think is part of why this movie didn't do well in, in the US, first of all, they released it like right like in the same week that I think Tintin and Hugo. Oh, Ooh, like, like all of these that's wow. a tough kid, week. kid aimed ambitious Scorsese anime films. and Spielberg. Wow. Yeah. So it got lost in that shuffle. But then also the title Arthur Christmas is a joke in the UK that it isn't 
here or in most places because a they refer to santa claus as father christmas and secondly they pronounce arthur as author so author christmas is like a pun uh, wow yeah right yeah but you, i didn't know that till just that, this moment i knew the father to, christmas thing but that makes sense yeah so so yeah i think the the, the british we just have to kind of go with that just go with you it gotta go just with go it. with it you and that, it, once you're once british always british that's the moral of the story I mean, that's, that's what a lot, of the, a lot of the world would beg to differ, but that's fine. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 history jokes. <laughs> what did you think of Hugo, by the way, Alonzo? I uh, didn't love it, but I haven't seen it since it came out. I did see that one in 3D, and it's okay. magical. Oh, my goodness. I, lo- I saw it in 3D, and the 3D is amazing. It's everything you would think of of a Scorsese 3D. Did you movie. see this movie in 3D, Author Christmas? I, I did, yeah. And and it was terrific, but I don't share Dan's like adoration of 3D. So I've never heard uh, you talk about 3D ever. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, like really, apart from the first Avatar, there aren't a ton of 3D movies where like, ooh, ah, 3D. Pacific you know? Rim? No, <laughs> no. I'll tell you, I, they screened Pacific Rim for us, and I saw it on the Warner lot. So presumably, the projectionists knew what they were doing, and I found it so dark and murky that I wow. didn't get the three D kind of pop uh, at all. That yeah, th- there weren't a lot of three D movies that I was super pumped about. Although I mean, like the animated films, obviously, are always kind yeah. of fun. And How to Train Your Dragons, maybe the best three D I've ever seen, aside from for Avatar. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flying is always effective, you know, for these movies. But Flying's always you know. Fun. But the oh, actually, you know what? The Disney movie Meet the Robinsons in 3D Ooh. I thought was gorgeous. Wow. Um, but the 3D in Arthur Christmas didn't blow me away to the extent that when I watched it flat every subsequent time, that I miss it. Yeah, hmm. I would okay. have. I never thought about it watching yeah. the movie. You obviously did. Yeah, so. not until this viewing, and then when I couldn't unsee it, I was like, "This would have been cool." <laughs> well, you were talking about while you were watching, you talked about how this movie hurt your eyes and how it's yeah, like, and, and then you that's and why then, that's I, what sent you down the rabbit but, hole. Movies, especially animated movies, if they're re- early on, when they were really made after Avatar, when they decided we're just going to go gung-ho with 3D and everything was in 3D, a lot of those retrofit movies, or a lot of the movies that they made for 3D, not retrofit mm-hmm. animated movies, if you're not watching them in 3D, it feels like a lot is being thrown towards the screen, towards the window, that you're like, why is this happening? At least I feel that way, and that that is maybe that maybe is why... It may at least make sense now. But I like this movie also gets rave reviews for when 3D TVs were a thing. Like we mm. were talking about that and how like that there was a moment for 3D TVs. And this is one of these movies that the Blu-ray, the 3D Blu-ray of Arthur Christmas on a 3D TV apparently is like the go-to. So there you have it. Maybe because it's a Sony movie and they really attuned yep. it for the Sony TVs or something. That's right. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, my what the hallmark is pretty straightforward. It's. What, how did Ardman decide on this? I, I like I, I just Ardman is known not exclusively but really known for stop motion claymation. Like that that's what they're known for, and that is where they like the Shaun the Sheep movies, the the Pirates, the Wallace and Gromit movies. Like these are like Chicken Run. Like these movies all like are next level in animation, and the the, the you can see the amount of detail and craft in there. I'm not saying that this movie doesn't have detail and craft. That's not what I'm saying. This is like over a $100 million budget. Uh, and it is going with a very, very different and distinct style of animation. And I just want to know the the impetus behind it. I want to know if they were like, I bet we can make a movie like Pixar. I, I don't know. Like, I'm just very curious. I don't know if you may know Alonzo, but I like that's my big, big question. Yeah, I don't. And in fact, like I, I know I didn't I still haven't seen the Chicken Run sequel, but uh, we know somebody who works at Netflix and actually came home one day with like a couple of the models. So I, as far as I know, they are still doing they are. Leaning mostly into stop motion. I mean, uh, Flushed Away was also CG, right? Yeah, it was a weird. They tried to, they make, tried to it make it look, look like, like, it. like yeah. stop motion, but it was CG. And I it's it's kind of that movie's not terrible, but it's kind of weird. It's a weird yeah. vibe to it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they were trying to get into the Pixar marketplace or what the idea was, but I mean, I still love this movie yeah. and I, I don't have a visual issue with it. So if they wanted to go I down also, this also route again, I would not have a problem with yeah. it. Um, we're going to do something crazy next Monday. 
What are we going to do? We're going to take the day off. Take the day? <laughs> we haven't what? Take, we haven't taken a day off since Man. January. <laughs> yeah. There's been lots of holidays. <laughs> Time out. We've not taken a single Monday no, to I went Friday back off. and confirmed. We haven't taken a day off since January. Wow, we're um, overdue. There's been lots of holidays. You know, we've plowed right through <laughs> July 4th and we're all like sorts of other things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Labor Day, though, there's nothing we this can is do. The our, one. our hands are tied. This is the our one. Our hands are tied. We're it also do. works out with... Do we put uh, the paperwork in on time for a day off? Uh, uh, the I, world unite. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, but also it worked out uh, scheduling-wise because of travel on Alonzo's end, and it was like, why why squeeze in? Let's just do a crazy thing where we take a, a take holiday off. Yeah. So we are going to take the day off. Um, but then we'll be back in two weeks, and I should have looked it up. I don't remember what the movie is uh, off the top of my head, but I will tell you in 16 seconds. Go, 16, 15. 14. Is it the man who invented Christmas? The man who Christmas? invented Christmas. I did it in three uh, seconds. The man, oh, I'm excited about this one. Saw it in the theater. Did you? I did. Cool, dude. Yeah. Are you talking about Jesus Christ? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Just making sure. Yes. Because if it's anybody else, have I got a belief to show you? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Until then, remember the first wish you a uh, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. The Hallmarks of Bravel Jam podcast is produced by Aaron Shea. What? For more information on Deck the Hallmark, you can go to deckthehallmark.com. For more information on the Deck the Hallmark family, you can go to bramblejamplus.com. Deck the Hallmark is presented by Philo TV. For a free trial of Philo, go to philo.tv slash DTH. You're about to hear some ads that help keep the lights on here in the old studio. Thanks for listening or don't listen. It's really up to you at this point. It's at the end of the show. I mean, you're listening to me. Hi. But here they come. I promise they're coming. Yep. Here they are. Happy day. Walmart has straight talk wireless, so I can keep doing me. Like hitting up all my friends for a last-minute study sesh. Or curating the best pop playlists you've ever heard in your life. And even editing all my socials to keep up with what's new. Oh yeah, I look good. Post it. Which all in all suits my study poppy main character vibes to a T. Period. Find and shop your fave tech at Walmart. Summer is supposed to be an opportunity to slow down. But when you look at your kids, you can't help but notice that your kids are growing up fast. Help them build independence as they grow with Greenlight. Greenlight is a debit card and money app for families where parents can keep an eye on kids' money habits while kids learn how to save, invest, and spend wisely. It's the easy, convenient way to raise financially smart kids. Get your first month free when you sign up at greenlight.com slash podcast. At Ashley, you'll find colorful furniture that brings your home to life. Ashley makes it easier than ever to express your personal style with an array of looks in fun, trending hues to choose from, from earth tones to vibrant colors to calming blues and greens. Ashley has pieces for every room in the house in the season's most sought-after shades. A more colorful life starts at Ashley. Shop in-store online today. Ashley, for the love of home. My Wrangler jeans from Walmart are legit my favorite go-to pants. They got that slim cut that's always fresh for going out. Hey, what's up? They're durable enough, even for my shift. Water up! And stretchy enough for when I want to kick back and chill with a movie. So basically, they can do it all, and on my budget. I mean, come on. You really can't beat all that. Shop your Wrangler pants at Walmart. Summer is supposed to be an opportunity to slow down, but when you look at your kids, you can't help but notice that your kids are growing up fast. Help them build independence as they grow with Greenlight. Greenlight is a debit card and money app for families, where parents can keep an eye on kids' money habits, while kids learn how to save, invest, and spend wisely. It's the easy, convenient way to raise financially smart kids. Get your first month free when you sign up at greenlight.com slash podcast. At Ashley, you'll find colorful furniture that brings your home to life. 
Ashley makes it easier than ever to express your personal style with an array of looks in fun trending hues to choose from, from earth tones to vibrant colors to calming blues and greens. Ashley has pieces for every room in the house in the season's most sought after shades. A more colorful life starts at Ashley. Shop in store online today. Ashley, for the love of home. My Wrangler jeans from Walmart are legit my favorite go-to pants. They got that slim cut that's always fresh for going out. Hey, what's up? The durable enough, even for my shift. Order up! And stretchy enough for when I want to kick back and chill with a movie. So basically, they can do it all, and on my budget. I mean, come on. You really can't beat all that. Shop your Wrangler pants at Walmart. Hey parents, Greenlight is here to take one big thing off your to-do list, teaching your kids about money. With a Greenlight debit card and money app of their own, kids and teens learn to earn, save, and invest. You can send money instantly, set flexible controls, and get real-time notifications of your kids' money activity. Set up chores and put allowance on autopilot to reward them for their hard work. Then, learn about the world of money together. Get one month free when you sign up at greenlight.com slash podcast. At Ashley, you'll find colorful furniture that brings your home to life. Ashley makes it easier than ever to express your personal style with an array of looks in fun trending hues to choose from, from earth tones to vibrant colors to calming blues and greens. Ashley has pieces for every room in the house in the season's most sought-after shades. A more colorful life starts at Ashley. Shop in store online today. Ashley, for the love of home. Walmart has straight talk wireless, so I can keep doing me. Like hitting up all my friends for a last minute study sesh. Or curating the best pop playlists you've ever heard in your life. And even editing all my socials to keep up with what's new. Oh yeah, I look good. Post it. Which all in all suits my study poppy main character vibes to a T. Period. Find and shop your fave tech at Walmart. Summer is supposed to be an opportunity to slow down. But when you look at your kids, you can't help but notice that your kids are growing up fast. Help them build independence as they grow with Greenlight. Greenlight is a debit card and money app for families where parents can keep an eye on kids' money habits while kids learn how to save, invest, and spend wisely. It's the easy, convenient way to raise financially smart kids. Get your first month free when you sign up at greenlight.com slash podcast. At Ashley, you'll find colorful furniture that brings your home to life. Ashley makes it easier than ever to express your personal style with an array of looks in fun trending hues to choose from, from earth tones to vibrant colors to calming blues and greens. Ashley has pieces for every room in the house in the season's most sought after shades. A more colorful life starts at Ashley. Shop in store online today. Ashley, for the love of home.